Because Photoshop is so many things to so many different people, it has a tremendous number of options. For example, look at the number of panels that are visible, and this isn't nearly all of them. Now, Photoshop does display panels a bit differently based on screen resolution, so you might be seeing a slightly different configuration by default. If your panel layout is different, you can choose the workspace picker and then select Essentials. And if it's still different, then you can choose Reset Essentials. Now to see an entire list of all of the different panels, we can use the window menu. And you'll notice that some of them have check marks next to them, and that's because they're visible and that they're on the top of whatever grouping of panels they're in. So for example, if I switch from color and choose to show my swatches instead, well, that's going to jump to the top of that grouping. And if we return to the window, we can see that swatches now has the check and color does not. Some panels automatically nest with other panels. So if I choose something like the character panel, we can see that it's nested automatically with the paragraph panel. Panels can be in a variety of states. So here we see that the paragraph and character panel have been expanded, but I can go ahead and collapse them by clicking on these double chevrons. These panels right here are in iconic view, but I can click on the left side of them and drag it out until I also get the icon with label view. And then we've got these little grabber handles. So if I wanted to change the order, I could grab the grabber handle and just drag that down. All right, let's go ahead and drag that back over so they're just in the icon view. Now to rearrange the panels that have been expanded, I can just click and drag on the tab for any of the panels. I can also rearrange any of the panels. So for example, if I want my swatches panel to nest with the learn libraries and adjustment panels, I just need to drag it and then we drop it within that other panel grouping. If I wanted to separate it so that it was in its own grouping, I could drag it and then just look for that one line of cyan. And now when I release it, you'll notice that it is in its own panel grouping. If I double click on the name of the panel, that will collapse it. And if I single click on it, it will go ahead and expand it again. I can add additional rows of columns by just clicking and dragging. And then when I see the cyan line vertically and I release the cursor, it will add it as its own panel grouping over here. If I use the chevrons here, I can collapse it down into the icon with view or drag down into the icon view. I can also just move this in with the other icons in order to save a little bit of screen real estate. Now, if I wanted to float one of these panels, I could just drag it away and undock it from the group. I'll go ahead and expand it by clicking on those two chevrons. And we can see that I can now reposition this. And that might be really handy if you want to place it, for example, on a second monitor. Once it's floating, if I want to close it, I'll just click on the check mark. If I want to close some of these other panels, I can right click and choose close, which would just close that one panel, or I can right click and choose to close the entire tab group at one time. If I ever want to hide my panels, I can tap the tab key, but that will hide not only the panels, but also the tools. If I want to see them again, I can just tap the tab key again or position my cursor on either side of the monitor in order to have them temporarily pop open. And then when I reposition my cursor, they'll go ahead and close. I'll tap tab to bring them back. To leave the tools visible, but hide the panels, I'll just add the Shift key and then tap the Tab key. Again, holding the Shift key, tap the Tab key to bring them back. Now, I want to point out one panel, and that's the Properties panel right here. It's a little bit unique or different from the others because the contents of this panel are going to change based on the tool and the layer that's selected. So I'll click on my Layers panel in order to show that, and then click on Properties again. And we can see that when I have a background layer selected, I get all sorts of content that relates to that background in the Properties panel. If I were to convert that background into a layer by clicking on the lock icon, well, now I see different information about that layer. 
And if I were to add some text on a type layer, I would get text information, or if I were to click and add a shape layer, I would get the information that relates to shapes. Now, in order to reset the panels, I'm going to reset the workspace by clicking on the workspace picker and then choosing Reset Essentials. 